Meet the Cowboy, a rugged young man with a fascination for the Wild West. This character build will be split into several different sections, going over perk loadout, equipment to use, and even a short backstory for anyone more interested in the role-playing side of things. I'll leave timestamps to each section in the description, so you can skip ahead to any part you want and skip over any sections you're not so interested in. To kick things off though, let's look at the recommended special I have for this build. For this build, I went with 12 Strength, 12 Perception, 5 Endurance, 4 Charisma, 5 Intelligence, 12 Agility, and 6 Luck. Before going any further, I want to make sure you all know that these stats can be tweaked. They're here primarily to allow for all of the required perk cards, which we'll look at in a moment. If you decide you want to switch perks around a bit, or don't need as much in one stat but more in another, then feel free to move some points around. The goal of this build is much more to give you a rough idea on how to make a good cowboy build, rather than tell you exactly what to do. Let's move on to the perks now, starting with Strength. Here I've got all three shotgunner perks maxed out, resulting in 60% extra damage with shotguns. Additionally, I went with a maxed out Scattershot perk card. This will reduce the weight of shotguns in your inventory by 90% and make them reload 30% faster. Next is Perception, where I've got all the Rifleman cards maxed out too. Just like Shotgunner, this will result in a 60% damage boost, this time to non-automatic rifles. Additionally, I've maxed out the Tank Killer perk card, giving them a 9% chance to stagger and 36% armor penetration. This goes a real long way to making rifles pack a hell of a punch that your adversaries won't soon forget. With Endurance, I had much less of an idea as for specific cards to go for. Really, all you're looking for here is to make sure you're not going to go down in a fight. Personal choices for me when it comes to Endurance perk cards are Fireproof, Photosynthetic, and Sunkist, but on this one you can really just go for whatever you most like. On to Charisma now, where the only card I've got is a Lone Wanderer. This is the ideal perk card for whenever you're playing solo, reducing the damage you take and increasing the rate at which you get action points back. Obviously, if you're playing in a team, you'll want to switch up this card for something else. Personally, I'd recommend Tenderizer as a good supportive perk, but there's plenty to choose from. In Intelligence, the only card I went for was Gunsmith. This is most helpful when it comes to modding out your guns, but the max rank of the card will also reduce the rate at which your guns break by half, meaning less time repairing and more time fighting. Penultimately, we have Agility with the maximum rank of all three Gunslinger cards. This functions in the exact same way as the Shotgunner and Rifleman cards, this time just for pistols. I've also got here the Enforcer perk card. This will give your shotgun a chance to both stagger and cripple, making it a far more effective weapon than it would normally be. The final stat is Luck, and here we have the Bloody Mess perk card. At the maximum rank you'll be dealing an additional 15% damage with all weapons. This is good for any build out there, but is particularly helpful for a character like this one, who uses multiple weapon types. On top of this, there are plenty of other luck perks that can supplement the build in a variety of ways. If you're spending most of your time in vats, then you may want to go for Grim Reaver Sprint. If you hate repairing, then luck of a draw could be more your thing, and if you're struggling to stay alive, then go for Serendipity. I will be leaving a link in the description for this build over on Nukes Dragons, if you want an easy guide to refer to, and a simple way to see how you can edit things. With perks out of the way, let's go over the equipment I was using with this build. For my weapons, I started off with Salt of the Earth, a double barrel shotgun that was available about a month back as one of the weekly survival legendaries. This weapon is really just a beefed up version of the standard double barrel, offering decent damage up close, but nothing too special to write home about. A weapon no cowboy wants to leave home without is a revolver. In my case, I managed to get a pretty sweet 3-star legendary western revolver, which does wonders against small groups of enemies. The final gun in our roundup is the lever action rifle. I managed to get a decent enough one from the purveyor a while back, and it comes in handy when trying to pick off those distant enemies. When it comes to modding these guns, I obviously made it a priority to max out damage, but I also wanted to ensure they all looked appropriate for the character. To this extent I forwent a suppressor on the rifle and had standard sights on all of the guns. I found this just helped with making sure they looked much more like the guns you'd associate with the Wild West. To add to that I limited my throwables to molotovs and tomahawks. These are both era appropriate weapons 
and still help to augment your overall combat abilities without compromising the theme. Speaking of which, let's move to the apparel, and in this case we're only going to be taking a look at the aesthetics. Obviously, the actual armour you're wearing is important, but as the legendary system is so random, I'm not going to specify anything other than just going for whatever the best armour you have happens to be. On the visual side of things though, I went with the Drifter outfit and black cowboy hat. These items go a long way to getting you into the feel of the character, without also being too difficult to obtain. There have recently been some cowboy outfits in the Atomic Shop, so feel free to go for them if you so wish, but I always try to stick to whatever clothing I can find just whilst adventuring in-game. I am also wearing a backpack in the video, and decided to remove any skins from it, as the basic look fitted reasonably well with the character. At least more so than the Arctos or Possum skin I had for it. On to actually playing the build now, and there's a decent level of flexibility and versatility here. The legendary effects you get on your weapons are likely going to heavily impact how you engage fights. For example, I had instigating on my western revolver, which meant I often used it as an opener, whereas my lever action had suppressors, which meant it held more value in an extended firefight where I was going to keep taking damage. Remember to utilise the legendary effects you get, and feel free to change the general tactics I give here if needed. In general though, there are some basic tips I can give to help when you're playing as this build. The first is to really focus on accuracy. All your weapons have low ammo counts, which means you'll be reloading a lot if you just spam the trigger without taking aim first. All the weapons have decent damage though, so lining up your shots for the enemy's weak spots can often result in having a pile of corpses at your feet before needing to reload. The range of your weapons is also a bit of a mix. The lever action will likely be what you use at the furthest range. Once the enemy notices you're shooting at them, you can switch to the revolver and pick them off at mid-distance, before finally switching to the shotgun to kill anything that managed to get too close. Speaking of the shotgun, the enforcer perk I briefly spoke on earlier makes this weapon ideal for defeating any big beasties you come up against. Could be a deathclaw, hermit crab, or even a scorch beast. Cripple it with your shotgun and the fight becomes a million times easier. If you haven't done this before, then I'd recommend giving the build a go just for this reason, as it can be a real fun way to tackle enemies that normally can cause a bit of damage. As a final note on playstyle, I'd also recommend roleplaying a little if you want to really get into the feel of things. We've got Wastelanders coming this autumn, and I'm sure there will be plenty of potential there to get the Wild West vibe going, with helping out settlers looking to stake their claim on West Virginia. Speaking of roleplaying, let's give you a quick backstory to work off of, if you want a hand with that side of things. The cowboy was rushed to the vault at quite a young age, meaning he didn't get a chance at a standard upbringing. Being stuck in an enclosed space with hundreds of other people, many of whom he found particularly irritating to deal with, he regressed somewhat socially, and instead spent most of his time watching the handful of old westerns available in the vault. It wasn't long before he knew every word, and before he was even halfway through his stay in the vault, he could even mirror the actions of every character on screen. As he made his way into adulthood, his fascinations in the Wild West shifted a little, as other things started to catch his attention. But they always had a strong place in his heart, and his passion for the subject often pushed people away from him. Despite this, he still lived a reasonable enough life in the vault. He probably wouldn't have said he was happy there, but satisfied could be a reasonable way to describe his life. Once the vault door opened and they were ushered out, things changed. He went from an easy and relaxed life in the vault, to suddenly having to survive out in the real world, dealing with all manner of tough challenges. To help him survive, he turned to what he knew best, the old westerns he had spent all those years watching. America needed to be retained, and it was the cowboys he so admired who had done it in the first place. He was going to be one of them. Question is, would he be the good, the bad, or the ugly. So, that was the video. It's been quite a while since I've made a character build, so I was fairly rusty, but I hope you all enjoyed anyway. With Wastelanders coming in the near future, I might return to bees a little more often, but, more than anything, it's going to rely on how well this video performs. Character builds take multiple days to make, this script alone is something I've spent about half a day on, so they're only something I can do once in a blue moon, and even then I need to be able to justify dedicating the time to them. What I'm basically saying here is please show the video some love if you enjoyed it and want more like it. Share the video on Twitter, tell your friends about it, or even just leave a like. 
whatever you do to help the video perform better is appreciated. If you want to go the extra mile, you can also support me on Patreon. If it wasn't for the Patreon support I've had, I would have never had the confidence to go full time on YouTube, and a lot of the videos you enjoy from me might have never been made, so it really is a huge support. Even if it's only a dollar a month, it makes a world of difference. Anyway, I'm going to stop myself here or else I'll ramble forever, and I don't have enough background footage for that. Make sure to subscribe for more Fallout 76 content, and join my Discord server through the link in the description if you want to interact with me and the rest of the community. As always, thanks for watching. Sarge out.